What I want to talk about today is what technology you should learn. And the answer is that it doesn't actually matter. Most good technology companies, including Facebook, which is where I worked most recently, are agnostic to what technology you've used before you join the company. That might be surprising to many of you because I think there are so many questions I get around what technology or framework or language should I use in order to optimize my chance for a particular job or internship. But in reality, the highest order bit for you getting that opportunity at a good large tech company is almost certainly not going to be your familiarity with React or Java or Python. It'll be much more focused on your fundamental knowledge and experience. So in this video, I want to talk about three reasons why the technology you know or you don't know doesn't actually matter in order to land your next opportunity. Another really common question I get in this domain is what is the optimal programming language to pick for interviewing? And again, the answer here is that it doesn't really matter. Pick the language which will optimize your chances of passing the interview, which means number one, that you're relatively quick with that language. And number two, you can express different constructs. You can explain the language at a certain level of depth that shows your awareness and knowledge of programming. Don't try and backtrack from what the company knows or what the company uses today, because at a good tech company, the interview process isn't testing how well you know their tech stack, it's testing how well you know the fundamentals of programming and software engineering. So based on my experience, here are three reasons why Facebook and other top tech companies don't care about what technology you've used in the past. First, fundamentals and depth of thinking are way more important than the familiarity with a particular technology or framework. So let's say that you are currently working at a company which uses AWS, Amazon Web Services, and now you're applying for a new company which uses a different cloud provider. As an interviewer, my expectation is that because you're familiar with AWS, your knowledge of these cloud APIs should translate relatively quickly over into a new cloud provider that my company uses, either Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud Platform. And so the kind of question I would ask would be, okay, on your resume, it says that you've used Amazon Redshift. Can you explain to me what is the problem that Redshift is trying to tackle and how does it do it? Can you peel back the abstraction a little bit and talk to me about how does Redshift actually work under the hood? And if you're able to answer that kind of question, then I have a lot of confidence that you can probably within a week or a month pick up the analogous technology in whatever tech stack that I'm using in my company. And that's, in, in my opinion, a much more critical knowledge, much more critical skill compared to the specific awareness of the API of Redshift or some other AWS technology. If you're able to talk about the inner workings of some product or technology, and importantly, the trade-offs of why you made that decision versus some other decision, that is really the kind of awareness and knowledge that I'm looking for. The second reason why the particular technology doesn't matter when you're applying for these top tech companies is because they've literally invented brand new languages, frameworks, whole version control systems at these companies. And so your past experience, while it is important, is not as relevant in many cases to what the company will be working on day to day. Because most of the tech that's used at these companies is internal to that company and they're basically on the cutting edge of technology, you can't really expect people to have worked on it or be familiar with it if they're coming in from the outside. So by necessity, you have to be able to gauge their aptitude and their skill in a different way, which goes beyond just how many years of experience do you have with X language or X framework. In fact, the reason why I think so many of these companies are desirable to work at is because they are at the cutting edge of technology, right? Like they're inventing or creating brand new ways of working because they're working on problems that very few people or very few companies have to deal with. And when you have problems, these really gnarly problems that few other people can tackle, and you have really talented people who are working on those problems, the natural consequence of that, the natural output of that is inventing new languages, new frameworks, new ways of doing things. And that is really exciting and it attracts really innovative people. For example, I'm sure many of you are aware that React, which is the most popular JavaScript framework in the world, was actually created at Facebook. And another really big Facebook invention was Hack, which is a programming language designed as a derivative of PHP, which basically has types included in it. And that's not all. I mean, Facebook has literally uh, dozens of different open source projects that they have this technology internally and they think that there's some value to attracting talent or to being able to help the developer community and they open source it. And this could be, these projects could be used by a few thousand people to literally millions of people across the whole world. And 
there's actually a lot of projects that don't ever get open sourced, right? But they are actually internal to how Facebook is building these massive scalable products. And Facebook's not unique here, right? Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple. I can guarantee that either they have a ton of these projects being open sourced, which, which we can actually take a look at, or they actually have a lot of projects which are completely internal that they haven't exposed yet. But if it's internal, then of course, I can't expect anyone outside the company to actually have familiarity with that. And so um, that's another reason why the technology you really use doesn't matter, as long as you can talk about it with a certain amount of eloquence and depth of why you made these decisions or what problem is being solved by the technologies you've used. Then I have confidence that you can come in and learn all this brand new stuff at my company. Finally, the third reason why many of these top tech companies don't really care about what technologies you've used in the past is because most of their senior or staff or higher level engineers aren't actually coding day to day. So, I mean, understanding the technology is fundamentally important. But what happens is that as you become more senior, you have most of your impact through others. You're enabling other people to do the work. So you're basically defining the API or the interaction between two different services. You're doing code review. You're um, creating design documents. These are high leverage activities that basically unblock your whole team or the people around you to get the work done. The intent of the company is that they want you to progress to being a tech lead, an architect, someone who has that higher amount of leverage. And so these companies want to look for people who have that ability to define an overall vision, an overall architecture, and enable other people to work on these different parts. And so whether you know the specific API of some Java library really doesn't matter. What matters is your ability to communicate with other people, to uh, build up trust, and to be able to communicate a technical vision. And that kind of stuff isn't really measured through you know, some programming language quiz or some uh, awareness of these different buzzwords that are out there. That is measured through system design interview or behavioral interviews or other means of testing which go beyond technology. So those are three different reasons why companies don't really care about what technology you, you've used in the past. What they really care about is your ability to have impact at their company. And almost certainly that's gonna require relearning or picking up some brand new technology. If you're going through the interview process, just pick whatever language you're comfortable with. If you're doing data structures and algorithms questions or coding questions, and most good tech companies shouldn't mandate that you use a particular language or framework. Freedom to choose a particular programming language or technology while interviewing, and then the trust to be able to pick up whatever technology when I start the job is something that I've seen across all the companies I've interviewed at or worked at um, in Silicon Valley. We're talking primarily um, medium and large tech companies. But if you have a different experience, I would love to hear from you about what worked, what didn't work. Please drop a comment or join the tech career growth community and shoot me a message. I would love to learn from other people's experiences as well and see if I can offer anything of value. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.